Welcome to the Shift Gold Friday Gold Wrap, your overview of this week's precious metals news. It's Friday, March 20th. I'm your host, Mike Meharry. Thanks for tuning in. You know, it's pretty amazing how fast things are moving right now. I was actually traveling last week and into early this week. I drove through several states in the southeast, and I can tell you that it is as nutty out there as it seems. You know, if you're sequestered in your home and just following along on the news or through social media, it's really eerie seeing empty store shelves and uh, restaurants closed up. It's just weird. Um and the markets are weird. Uh, they continued their free fall this week. You know, everything is selling off. Stocks, of course, are way down uh, despite a rebound on Tuesday and, and some small gains yesterday. Bonds have sold off. Commodities, including gold and silver, have sold off. Now, there was a big rally overnight, uh, pretty broad-based in stocks, gold, uh, on the overseas markets, and it looks like that could continue today into the U.S. As one article put it, policymakers have pulled out all of the stops and adopted a whatever-it-takes approach to dealing with the economic impacts of coronavirus. So we're talking like $3 trillion in stimulus pledged globally so far. So that's feeding a little bit of a market rally, I guess. But, you know, the possible stimulus Fed rally aside, the only thing that really has shown a lot of strength over the last week is the U.S. dollar. The dollar index has gone up seven of the past eight trading days. It's gained more than 8% including a 1.5% rise yesterday. So cash is king right now. Investors are trying to get out of everything, and they're getting into the U.S. dollar. Now, you know when the last time the U.S. dollar went up like this? 2008. There are an awful lot of parallels between now and what we saw in 2008. So let's take a little bit closer look at gold. Uh, Of course, the yellow metal spent most of the week dropping with everything else. It was well below $1,500 an ounce yesterday, but we did have that rally overnight along with stocks and other commodities overseas. As I record the podcast, we're at about $1,518 an ounce. Now, interestingly, when I first started prepping the podcast, it was at $1,516. So we've dropped about 8 bucks this morning, so I'm not sure that rally is going to hold up. But I think you can expect volatility to continue. Now, overall, of course, gold is down like everything else, but I think it's important to remember it's not down nearly as much as stocks, right? We're basically even on the year. Gold was at 1517 an ounce on January 1st. Uh, now, put it into broader perspective, a year ago, we were at 1307 an ounce. Perspective on these things is always important. Now, a lot of people are asking me why gold, a supposed safe haven, is falling in the midst of a major economic crash. I mean, I think this feels unusual intuitively, right? But as I've said, gold also fell hard in 2008. In fact, it fell a lot more steeply than it is now as the financial system began to unravel back in 08. It fell 29.5% between March 2008 and November 2008. Then it started to recover as all the QE and monetary stimulus came kicked in. Silver crashed even worse during that time. It lost 57.6% in just seven months through 2008. So if you look at gold and silver in this crash compared to then, the metals are actually doing quite well, especially if you compare it to, well, pretty much everything else. Stocks have lost like, what, 30% in just two weeks? So Anyway, over the next three years, between 2008 and 2011, gold gained 166%, and silver, 448.4%. So this is a long-term event we're looking at. Some guy on Facebook was talking about the draconian responses to the coronavirus, and he said, if we save lives, it's worth a little recession. And I told him that calling what's coming down the pike a little recession is like calling the coronavirus just the flu. Now, I'm not one of those people who says the coronavirus is no big deal. It's not just the flu. Now, I'm not convinced that we should be shutting down the world because of it, but it is a significant health issue. But I'll be honest, I'm more concerned about the consequences of all the government and central bank response to the virus than I am the actual virus itself. 
They're just throwing fuel on the fire. And my gut is that all of these people hiding in the U.S. dollar are going to be really sorry when all of this monetary and fiscal stimulus actually starts flowing through the pipeline. I mean, as Peter Schiff said in a podcast this week, this is bailout nation. Everybody is getting a bailout. They're talking airline bailouts, hotel bailouts. I've even seen a movie theater bailout pitched. The Fed is already bailing out the banks. And then there are the stimulus checks that it looks like the government is going to be sending out. Yes, we're like three weeks into this and Uncle Sam is already firing up the chopper to drop the helicopter money on our heads. The government stimulus package they're talking about is to the tune of like $1.2 trillion. And the Fed... People often use the analogy of the central bank using ammunition to fight a recession. Well, if we're going to go with that analogy, the Fed is just basically wildly spraying machine gun fire at this point. Last week, we got the rate cut to zero. We got the quantitative easing. This week, we got more quantitative easing. The Fed said it will begin to hold two daily repo operations instead of one. Now, you'll recall that the Fed started running repo operations to stable overnight lending markets way back in September, which goes to show this is a little more than just about coronavirus. The central bank also relaunched the so-called commercial paper funding facility. This is a 2008 financial crisis program that allows companies to take out unsecured short-term loans. In practice, the Fed will buy commercial paper directly from companies, and the loans will have to be paid back within, generally it's a year. The U.S. Treasury is going to provide $10 billion of credit protection to the central bank's commercial paper operation. To go along with the CPFF, the Fed also announced a primary dealer credit facility, which offers overnight and term funding with maturities up to 90 days. So all of this just to inject liquidity into the financial system. In simplest terms, these programs will allow over-leveraged companies to go even deeper into debt, And those loans are going to be backed up by the federal government. Peter called it Bank Bailout 2.0. He summed it up in his uh, podcast this week, quote, Loaning money to banks and accepting corporate and muni bonds plus equities as collateral so the banks don't have to sell those assets at a huge loss is a bailout. In 2008, I warned the next bank bailout would be even more expensive. And here we are. The Fed made these moves after the cost of borrowing in the commercial paper market spiked a full percentage point last Monday, pushing above 3%. This is according to Fed data. That means that even with the 100 basis point rate cut, market forces were still pushing interest rates higher in response to the increased demand for liquidity. This is another central bank manipulation to keep interest rates artificially low. With the economy slowing due to coronavirus, inflation should ostensibly be lower. So why are bond yields rising? Because everybody, governments, corporations, individuals, they are all already deeply in debt. The economy has very little savings. Again, Peter said the last thing the Fed wants is for the free market to function because then it exposes the gigantic mess that it's created. So it's doing everything it can to prevent market forces from raising interest rates to a market clearing level. The Fed has come in with QE and they have to buy up or loan money into the commercial paper market to keep interest rates from rising. Basically, the Fed is just rigging the markets at this point. So yeah, it's bailout nation. Everybody is getting money. Here's the problem. There is no money. Many people have likened this battle against coronavirus to a war and invoked imagery of the U.S. fighting World War II. President Trump has even deemed himself a, quote, wartime president. The president told reporters at a White House briefing that fighting the virus would require a sacrificial national effort, just like it took to defeat the Axis in World War II. He said, every generation of Americans has been called on to make shared sacrifices for the good of the nation. To this day, nobody has ever seen like it what they were able to do during World War II. Now it's our time. We must sacrifice together because we are all in this together and we will come through together. But listening to all this rhetoric coming from politicians and pundits, you got to ask the question, where exactly is the sacrifice? I mean, we're all getting bailed out. We're getting checks, right? Apparently, the government wants sacrifice with no pain. Unfortunately, that's not a thing. 
Americans didn't get checks from government in World War II. They got higher taxes. Peter summed it up in a tweet. During World War II, middle-class Americans sacrificed to support the U.S. government's war effort. They paid much higher taxes, substantially reduced their consumption, and loaned their savings to the government. The people support the government. The government can't support the people. This is one of the most key phrases I've seen uttered in this entire uh, crisis or whatever you want to call it. The people support the government. The government cannot support the people. You are paying to support the government. You know, this is the ugly truth. There is no sacrifice without pain. The government can bail out the airlines. It can bail out the hotels. It can helicopter money in and drop it on your head. You are still going to pay, either through higher taxes in the future or through inflation. In the end, economics always wins. Trump is right. You're going to sacrifice for the government's actions surrounding the coronavirus. What he's not telling you is it's going to hurt. The government and central bank response to this economic crisis precipitated by coronavirus, it's creating the perfect storm for price inflation. The problem isn't a lack of money. It's a lack of stuff. We're all sitting at home and a lot of us aren't producing anything. Uncle Sam can stuff our mailboxes full of checks. That money doesn't do us a damn bit of good if there is nothing to buy. The end result will be a lot more dollars chasing a lot fewer goods. That's the definition of price inflation. It means you're going to see your stimulus check buying less and less. When inflation heats up, interest rates rise. That's the proper response. That's what the Fed is fighting. It's trying to keep interest rates low so that the debt bubble can continue on. How exactly is this going to work in a world up to its eyeballs in debt? This is exactly why Peter Schiff keeps saying that we are on the path to a dollar crisis. He said all the money the Fed is printing isn't going to have value. It isn't going to buy anything. Prices are going to skyrocket. And in fact, this coronavirus is accelerating that process because the coronavirus is reducing the supply of goods available to buy. Again, this is a perfect storm. I've always held to the theory that when the doctor tells you this won't hurt a bit, it's going to hurt like hell. You would be wise to treat politicians the same way. When they tell you the sacrifice won't hurt because they're going to make it all okay, you better hold on to your wallet because you are going to sacrifice and it's going to hurt. All I can say at this point is try to be prepared. Be as prepared as you can. You can talk to a Shift Gold Precious Metal Specialist and find out how. Call 1-888-GOLD-160 or you can email them at info at shiftgold.com. Now, I do need to let you know that due to extremely high demand and shortages on a lot of gold and silver bullion products, at this time, Shift Gold is only doing transactions of $5,000 or more. Well, that is a gold wrap for this week. You can get more details on all of these stories and more and keep up with the latest precious metals news and analysis throughout the week at shiftgold.com news. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you haven't done it already, you can subscribe to the Friday Gold Wrap over at iTunes or on the Shift Gold YouTube channel. Please stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you again next week.